One of the big props under the U.S. dollar has been what's called the petrodollar deal. This is something that came out in the, the mid-1970s, again, a time when the dollar was under attack. And the United States, through um, Henry Kissinger, said to the Saudi Arabians, look, we will guarantee your security, the continuation of the rule of the House of Saud and the national security of Saudi Arabia, because they were weak militarily, and they had a, and I like to say the Middle East is a bad neighborhood, they had a lot of enemies. In exchange, we want you to price oil in dollars. There's no reason why oil has to be priced in dollars. It could be priced in uh, today, euros, back then, Deutsche Marks, uh, Swiss francs, Japanese yen, gold. You can price oil a lot of different ways. But they agreed to price it in dollars in exchange for our guarantee of their continued rule and their national security. That deal worked beautifully for 30 years, through the 80s, the 90s, the early 2000s. It really did put a floor under the dollar. But just last... Uh, December, December 2013, the president, President Obama, reneged on the deal. He engaged in uh, the beginning of detente with Iran, uh, which is a bitter enemy of Saudi Arabia. So the U.S. is now saying to Iran, uh, hey, you are, you are our cop on the beat. You're our best friend in the Middle East. Well, this is a stab in the back to the Saudis. By the way, Saudi sells most of the world these days to China, not the United States. So how long will it be before Saudi Arabia says, okay, China, we'll take your currency in exchange for oil, uh, or maybe we'll take gold, or China buys gold and gives us gold, and we'll send you the oil. But one way, one way or another, the dollar is out of the picture. Again, that hasn't happened yet, but that process is already underway. So these, this is one of many threats to the reserve currency status of the dollar. And when that status goes away, as I described, you could be back to a world of you know borderline hyperinflation in the U.S. That man in the video you just watched is none other than Jim Rickards. He's an American attorney, investment banker, and economist. And as we heard in that video, he was talking about how the petrodollar has given the United States dollar world reserve currency status. How it has propped up the value of the United States dollar. Another thing that Mr. Rickards mentioned was how in 2013, the Obama administration started to be quite friendly with Iran. And Saudi Arabia didn't like that. And essentially he was reneging on their existing agreement, which is problematic. That as well as many other events that happened prior to in the Middle East has led to the news that we see this week. We see that the Saudi Arabians decided not to renew the petrodollar agreement, which has been in place for over 50 years. So what are the Saudis going to be doing now? Because Saudi Arabia is a top five oil producing nation. Well, we do know that this year in 20, 2024, Saudi Arabia actually joined BRICS, which is a massive deal. BRICS already has Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. Major economies in the world. And with Saudi Arabia joining them, it seems like they are seeking to align their interests with the BRICS conglomerate. One of the main initiatives of the BRICS conglomerate that we were able to start seeing after the past summit was that they want to get off the United States dollar bill, mainly because the United States continues to put sanctions on them in their, in their countries. So they want to start trading in their own local currencies. Very very interesting. So what the Saudi Arabians are going to start doing now is for their uh, purchases of oil, they're likely going to use the local currency that they're trading with in regards to the country. So when they're trading with China, they're going to use the Chinese yuan. When they're trading with Russia, they're going to use the ruble. And if they are going to be trading with the United States, they might use a dollar. Very interesting shift in the global economic landscape because now it opens up the reality of a new reserve currency.
currency. With the new reserve currency possibly in the future, what does this mean for the United States dollar bill? And the correlated United States economy. Prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. Well, I believe over the next couple of years, like Mr. Rickards mentioned. And when that status goes away, as I described, you could be back to a world of, you know, borderline hyperinflation in the U.S. We could see a situation where inflation is starting to rise because there's no longer this petrodollar agreement in place. Not only will inflation rise, but essentially what that means is that your dollar bills, your United States dollar bills are not going to be worth as much as they were in previous times. You're gonna be buying less with your $1 bill. And your purchasing power is going to decrease. And this is why this event is extremely important and it should encourage you. It should wake you up to starting to build a portfolio of assets that are going to retain their store of value, which is something that we talk about extensively here on the Money Pot YouTube channel. So make sure that you not only like this video, but subscribe to the Money Pot channel and check out some of our past content. But regardless of what you do, make sure that you stay blessed, stay healthy, stay prayed up.